In this video, we are going to cover the September shakeout, which is currently going on. The Chinese FUD around Evergrande, and they're calling it the Chinese Lehman Brother collapse. That's apparently going to trigger the whole economic collapse and why I don't think that is the case. And we're going to see at exactly why the Wyckoff distribution pattern has repeated itself for a second time on a smaller time frame. All of this is very, very interesting and can be very helpful for you to help you navigate the crypto market. So let's dive straight in. What's up guys, Dirk here from intelligentcryptocurrency.com. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell so you do get my future updates. And if you want me to email you every time I upload a new video, first link in the description down below, get on there, get my free crypto masterclass, you get on my email list and I can send you an email that way. Now real quick, before we get into today's content, just a little reminder, I will be closing the doors to my intelligent cryptocurrency membership next month. So in about three weeks from today, I will be closing the doors. I'll announce the exact date um, a little bit later on, but about three weeks from now, I'm not gonna be taking on new members for the remainder of the bull run. So that is probably gonna be until sometime middle next year, maybe even past that point. I suspect that we are entering the final phase now of the bull market, which means that if the previous cycle plays out like it did in 2017, the next few months could be absolutely explosive. We could see a huge parabolic run, but after that, I think it's gonna crash, it's gonna come back down, probably 80, 90% drop. So if you still want to navigate the crypto bull run together with me and all the other members, there's over a thousand of us inside the forums, inside the Discord group. Second link in the description down below. You can still join us after next month you won't be able to anymore. Okay, first let's start off with the Evergrande situation where over the past week or so, out of nowhere, this has come up and all of a sudden it's being paraded everywhere on the news, it's all over the internet, and they're say, basically saying, hey, this Evergrande, which is a Chinese real estate company, they're basically defaulting on their debt and they're all calling it, this is gonna be the Chinese Lehman Brothers event, you know, the, the Lehman Brothers the Bank in the US that basically caused the 2008 meltdown crisis um, that, that triggered all of that. And now they're calling this Evergrande meltdown, whatever the case is gonna be here, that they're saying, oh, this is gonna maybe be the domino that basically collapses the whole financial economy. Obviously, because people are concerned that everything is crazy, overvalued the stock markets are at insane levels the price earnings levels and stocks are unheard of there's so many warning signs of the stock market so everyone is very jumpy that even one little thing can basically just knock the whole dominoes down and and cause a, a trigger effect that that causes another 2008 style crash or worse now my personal opinion is that i think if this was going to happen they wouldn't be announcing it before the time it would just happen it would happen, the markets would crash, it would sell off, it would create a massive waterfall event. And maybe that can still happen, I'm not saying it can't, because indeed all those concerns are valid that the stock markets are insanely overvalued. We've had an enormously long bull run since 2008. Normally these corrections are about approximately every seven years. We had one in 2000, we had one in 2007, 2008, and we haven't had one since then. So it is overdue, but the environment is also different where the amount of money that's being created and being printed is propping up those stock markets and asset classes around the world pretty much. So what is interesting to see over here is that while everyone is super bearish and this is being created on the media and, and everyone is talking about, hey, this is gonna collapse and people are super bearish and saying, hey, it's over, we're gonna get a, a massive crash in the stock market and obviously that could very well spill over into crypto. And what you're seeing here now, this just came out today, the PBOC, so the People's Bank of China, boosts daily liquidity injection to 120 billion won. You can see over here, they have reached a deal to avoid default on key bond. So my theory on this, or my, my guess, or my speculation, I'd say, I obviously don't know, but this is just my opinion, is that all of this is kind of being paraded and they're gonna come in and they're gonna save it in some way, they're gonna print up a lot of money, billions and billions and billions, maybe trillions, and it's gonna go into the market. And that could very well result in an enormous blow off top in the stock market and in crypto if this all works together, because the timing is pretty perfect. Q4 is historically uh, a, bullish, um, a bullish quarter, right? October, November, December, especially for crypto too. And September is traditionally a shakeout month both in the stock market and in crypto. So this is happening in September. 
if this does indeed end up being FUD and not a domino that's going to trigger the next financial crisis, which in my opinion would be way too obvious. It would just happen when people don't expect it. Too many people are expecting it, in my opinion. So if this happens, they print up a ton of money. We get a huge boost in the stock markets, in the crypto markets. And then after that is done, when everyone thinks, hey, there's no more danger anymore, things are going up, it's just going to keep going up forever. That is when it reverses and that is when it crashes. And that is still what I'm expecting. Also for the crypto markets, I do still expect a blow off top in the next three to four months. If that does happen, then I do also expect that huge crash afterwards, 80, 90 percent, maybe uh, at least probably a 12 month bear market, maybe longer once again. So. That is the Evergrande meltdown China's moment. That is what I think is going to happen. Of course, I could be wrong and it could indeed trigger a global collapse, but I'm still leaning towards what I just told you about that. So finally, for the last phase of this video, I want to share with you the Wyckoff patterns. So Richard Wyckoff was an early 20th century pioneer in the technical approach to studying the stock markets. Now, over the last few months, especially when we had the sell off in May, there were a lot of people talking about the Wyckoff pattern and how the pattern that had been building up in Bitcoin was pretty much exactly what Mr. Wyckoff had described and studied out of his patterns. Okay, So I will link to this down below. If you don't know about this, you can go and read about this. It's very interesting. After studying the markets for super long, he put together a schematic of how the markets behave and, and not just crypto markets, stock markets, all type of markets for the, the big boys and the big players and the manipulators to basically just shake out all the retail investors to take their money basically in the most ways by by delaying the markets, by moving them in certain ways. They know exactly where the pain thresholds are. Obviously, a lot, a lot of this do, is mostly done through through algorithms and computers. But you have a, a Wyckoff accumulation phase and then you have a distribution phase. So we're going to look specifically at the distribution phase, which I'm not going to get too technical with this. You can study all of this, which is very interesting to do, by the way. So if you have some time, I do recommend reading at least this article and, and spending some more time with it. But basically, this is a schematic that you can apply, which is the Wyckoff distribution. And you can see it basically has three tops. OK, so it goes up. It has three tops. This is basically a giant distribution that's designed to suck as many people in as possible and then it drops down. And this is exactly what we saw in Bitcoin um, before the May crash. So we had this run up, we had one, two, three tops, then we had a sell off, another rally, right? And then down. And I don't have the ability to do that right now, but if you were to overlay this, you can actually match this almost very, very exactly to this pattern if you were to overlay it. So the interesting thing that we can see now is that this rally that we've had from about 29,000 all the way to 53,000 is almost identical to this entire larger move. You can see we had a big move up as indicated by the arrow over here. We had three higher highs. Then we had a sell off over here, sell off. We had a rally over here, rally over here and a further sell off. So actually, if you take this right and then this is really a cool little feature over here. Um, we can take this bars pattern and we can move it over here. And then the cool thing is you can actually play around with it a little bit to adjust the pattern a little bit more, right? So you can see, look how almost identical that is, right? And it's a different, um, obviously different size, but in terms of the pattern, almost identical, almost identical. And the interesting thing to note here is that if this is indeed playing out, which so far at this point it has, I mean, at any point now it, it could, continue to change. But okay, let's let's get rid of that one. You can see over here. So what happened is after the crash, it went to the lows of this pullback. So if we assume that this is repeating because so far up to this point it has, then the low of this pullback, same like here, would be the ultimate support if it does sell off further, which means that that level over there is about thirty seven thousand dollars. I don't know if it's going to go that low, but if this is repeating, that is what we could expect. So if it does sell off more and it creates some more panic, we're at 42,000 now. If it does go to 37, maybe it does it pretty quickly with a small wick or something like that. And we create a base over here and then we can continue going higher back to the all time highs and beyond. Because if it would base over here, basically we have created a higher low. Okay, This was the low, this is a higher low, which means we go up, down and then we can continue higher. So I just wanted to share that with you. It is very interesting how that is almost identical. 
So we are still in September, which is traditionally a red month, right? It's, I've, I've shown you this at the beginning of the month. I've been talking about September. So far, there is still absolutely nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, we still have eight days left before the month closes. So anything can still happen. It can still reverse back up and turn green. It can stay here. It can go a little bit lower still. But this is still perfectly on par with what happened in the previous September, pretty much since 2013. So hopefully we are going to get October, November, December as huge green months. We are going to hopefully create this higher low over here, um, $37,000 or higher. I mean, I'm happy for it to just reverse back up from here. 42,000 and set the low there, but anywhere between maybe 42 and 37. And then hopefully we continue the rise up in October, November, December, back to the all time high, new all time highs, and then also our blow of top in altcoins after Bitcoin has finished its run. So of course, this is just one scenario, but with everything lining up, that might be a possibility. Of course, if it does drop below here and everything is over and the stock market sells off, well, then the picture is going to change and then we're going to have to readjust our strategy. But for now, we are still looking for it to create a higher low and then reverse back to the upside, go back to the highs and set new highs. So hopefully all of that is going to play out. Wanted to share all of this with you to help you be a little bit more prepared. And then at least when the market does move, whether it's up or down, you have some different ideas and some different scenarios. So you don't panic sell the very bottom at 37,000 when it just reverses and then it goes back up to 100,000. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how this plays out. Obviously on the first of every month, I will do the monthly update depending on how the monthly candle has closed, then we will be able to have a better insight of what lies ahead for the next month. And also for the quarter, because at the end of this month, the three month candle, so for Q3 is going to be closing, which again gives us some additional insight. So on the first, we will be watching that video. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Get on my email list, the first link in the description down below so that you don't miss those updates whenever I upload them. And finally, just a reminder, if you do want to join us inside Intelligent Cryptocurrency, the second link in the description down below, the doors will close to new members next month and they won't open again until sometime middle of next year after we've had the bear market crash that I am anticipating. So if you want to join us, you want to join the members area, the Discord, get the tutorials, the monthly newsletters, the forum, all of that is available. at 60 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk to signing up. But if you wait until the doors are closed. You're not going to be able to join until sometime end of next year. Thanks for watching. I hope you have an awesome day and I will see you in the next video. Peace.